In our last few sessions, we were implementing bootstrap in R. Now to implement bootstrap in R, we were writing down the functions in R and then resampling and calculating the bootstrap based statistic. Now all this can be done in one using one function called the boot function. The boot function is in the package boot. In this session, we would be learning about how to use the boot function to do a variety of resampling bootstraps in R. The boot package implements many variants of resampling methods in R. The advantage is that the boot package by itself does all those implementations and the user just needs to provide the function and the data and the repeated resampling is done by the boot function in the boot package. So, we would be using some of the codes in the quoted article and see how we can have a feel or see how we can use the boot function to implement certain bootstrap in R easily. Now, as the boot function in the R package boot implements the resampling methods for IID data. Now, for an IID data, the boot function in the boot package implements the resampling. The boot function performs resampling methods for the IID data. In such a case, the basic bootstrap works by fitting a distribution function f at to the unknown population distribution f and then what is done is r samples of the same size as that of the original sample are generated from f at. Now, this is an example of the non-parametric bootstrap. For the parametric bootstrap, we assume that the distribution function f has a parameter psi and so instead of sampling from f hat, the sample here is taken from f of psi hat, where psi hat is a cons consistent estimator of psi. Now, the function, the boot function then takes the original data and returns a sample from f hat. For the non-parametric case, this estimate of f is the empirical distribution function. And in this case, a sample of f hat is found simply by sampling with replacement from the original data. Now, suppose we are interested in theta equal to T f, which is an estimator or based on f and then the plug-in estimate of this function is T of f hat, which corresponds to a bootstrap sample distribution function f hat star. So, now we can get T star, which is T of f hat star and this is the estimate of t. So, the bias, the estimated bias now becomes b hat, which is t star bar, which is mean of all the bootstrap samples minus t hat and the variance of the estimator is v star, which is 1 by r minus 1, summation r runs from 1 to r, t star minus t bar star square. So, that is the variance of all the bootstrap estimates obtained. Now, the function boot is designed for a general function t for bootstrap. So, the user should provide the t function. In the parametric bootstrap, this is the t function is simply a function of the data set. While for the non-parametric case, this t function or the statistic must be a function of the original data set and along with that we need to specify a second argument which is used to determine a bootstrap sample. Now, let us take an example. So, we are going back to the same example of the year condit data which we had analyzed previously for the to estimate the mean and the standard error of the mean. So, here we first define a function called mean dot w and mean dot w is function of x w where the function returns sum of x into w. After defining this mean dot w function, 
and note that here we are performing a non parametric bootstrap. So, we would be passing this function and the data on which this function needs to be run. So, we are calling the function boot and passing on the arguments data equal to year condit dot hours and then we are specifying the statistic is mean dot w which is the function p that we were talking about earlier and we want 999 replicates. I mean this is we can change the number of replicates, but by default it is 999 and then we have specified another parameter. Now, this is the second parameter that the user needs to specify and we have specified here s type equal to w where w are nothing but the probability weights which is estimated by the relative frequency. So, if we run this we get the output as the original value or the original bootstrap statistic value which comes out here to be 108.0833 the bias which is 0.3546 and the standard error which comes out to be 37.34891. In a later slide we would see how to implement or how to construct confidence interval using the functions of the boot package, but before going into that we would see how we can implement a linear model in using the boot package. So, for the linear model if we want to bootstrap the data is generally a matrix or a data frame. Now, we can use two methods one method is to resample rows or the other, other method can be to resample the residuals and whichever method we take we can then reconstruct a response vector. Now, we are showing here both the methods and this is the code taken in verbatim from the article resampling methods in R. So, it starts with the data cats m. So, we can have question mark cats m to see what exactly is the data like, but it is basically heights and weights of cats. So, after defining cats dot fit we define a case dot function which would do the repeated sampling and that is function of d and i where it would take cats dot fit d i. Similarly, we can have a model function that is for resampling the residuals which is model dot fun function of d i and here it would take d dollar height is equal to d dollar fit plus d dollar residual i. That means, it is now resampling the residuals and then adding it to the fitted values and the output is cats dot fit d. So, now we have two functions one is the case dot fun and one is the model dot fun and then we use the boot command here. So, boot cats 1 that is our data case dot fun and we are telling to repeat r the bootstrap procedure 999 times. Similarly, cats dot mod is another function. So, here we are telling to bootstrap with the data to be cats 1, the function is model dot fun and 999 repetitions which is the default. Now, we can get the output. So, for example, to get the output of cats dot case we can just type in cats dot case and the moment we type cats dot case it, it gives the bootstrap statistic. So, here it returns 4 values t 1 star, t 2 star, t 3 star and t 4 star or a vector of length 4. The first two components are the coefficient estimates while the second two components are the estimated variances of the estimate from the usual linear model. And now we see that the bootstrap standard error are bit higher than the usual standard errors. We can also check the bootstrap function or the output of the bootstrap function by plotting them. So, for example, plot cats dot case 2 index equal to 2 that gives the slope output for 
cat same data set using the case resampling method. So, it gives the histograms of all possible bootstrap statistic of slope and the QQ plot. One can use to see if there are outliers or not, one can use the jackknife after bootstrap plot and that can be used by jack dot after dot boot and we have already seen an application in our last class of this function which points out which outlier or which data point has a significant effect. Now, once the bootstrap output is confirmed, then the user can proceed to use the output and the most common way of using bootstrap output is the constructing confidence intervals. So, here is a small function from the help page of boot.ci which is the function which constructs the confidence interval. Now, previously we had used the non-parametric bootstrap version, here we are using the parametric bootstrap version. So, if we see, uh, so parametric bootstrap version of the air condit data. So, first we are defining the function mean dot func, which is function of d and i and this function calculates the mean and it also calculates the variance and returns the variance. Now, this variance we had not calculated this variance for the non-parametric case. But this variance needs to be calculated because we, if we are going for a studentized confidence interval, we need the variance for each of the sample. And then again we are calling year dot boot, so we are bootstrapping this with the year condit data and mean dot fun. So, we are running mean dot fun on the year condit data 999 times. And then the command is boot.ci of the bootstrap object. Here the bootstrap object is year.boot. So, boot.ci of year.boot gives the bootstrap and we it gives basically five types of bootstrap confidence interval. The first is the normal interval which assumes a asymptotic normal distribution and uses the bootstrap estimate of bias and variance for the parameter of the distribution and then the basic bootstrap and the percentile bootstrap, then the studentized bootstrap and the bias corrected adjusted bootstrap. So, like this we can use the boot.ci function for any bootstrap object to calculate the confidence interval. Further, we take a slightly complicated example where we would be resampling censored data. Once again, this is the example from the article that we had cited. Now, there is a particular function called sense CNS boot, which implements bootstrap for randomly for random right censored data. Now, for a right censored data, typically the observations are yi di, where yi is minimum of xi ci and d i is an indicator function indicating whether x i is less than equal to c i or not. Now, we assume that here x i follows f and c i follows g independently and i is the indicator function. Now, non-parametric estimates of f and g are the kaplan meyer estimates which are used heavily in survival analysis and we denote them by f star and g star. Now, we can proceed by sampling x 1 star to x n star from a star and independently sampling c i star c 1 star to c n star from g star. Once this samples are, so we now have x i star paired samples x i star c i star and from that we can construct y i star d i star. Now, there can be an alternative approach in which a conditional bootstrap is used. So, here procedure or the algorithm conditions the resampling on the observed censoring pattern. So, the sample x 1 star to x n star is taken from a fat as before, but if the ith observation is censored, then we set 
c i star equal to y i and if it is not censored then a sample observation is obtained from the estimated conditional distribution of c i of c i given that c i is greater than y i. So, now in this way we can generate x 1 star to x n star and c 1 star to c n star and once x i star and c i star is generated we can generate y i star d i star in the same way as before. There are other sophisticated methods also for this sort of resampling scheme and the other method is called the weird bootstrap. This was this works by simulating from the Nelson Allen estimate of the cumulative hazard function. Now, the sense boot function implements all of the three methods and in the example we would be seeing the conditional bootstrap approach. So, to get the conditional bootstrap approach we need the data melanoma which is in library survival. We also need survival because we need to fit Cox proportional hazard models because the distribution the survival distribution depends on covariates and that is fitted through the Cox proportional hazard model. So, we first call the library survival and then data melanoma and then define or rather usually fit the simple Cox proportional model and store it in an object called mail dot Cox. So, this is very similar to fitting a Cox proportional hazard model we are not going into the details of it and then we use the surfit function to fit the survival curves using the Kaplan Meier estimates. Now, after that we define the statistic needed to be passed on in the boot function. So, we define the function mail dot fun which is function d Cox proportional model and then we call the function sensed boot provide that the data is mail. The statistic we are interested in is mail dot fun or is computed using the function mail dot fun. We want 999 repetitions or bootstrap samples. The method simulation method would be the conditional method and f dot serve is the survival curve mail dot serve and g dot serve is the survival curve mail dot sense. The Cox model is mail dot Cox and now if we call mail dot boot it returns the original statistic the bias and the standard error. We can then call boot dot c i and then we can specify the type to be basic and percentile and since it is an exponential transformation we also provide the transformation through the parameter h which is e x p and that gives us the intervals. So, we get the 95 percent basic and the 95 percent percentile intervals. Now, we see that the usual interval here from summary mail dot cox is narrower than bootstrap intervals. Apart from the boot and sense boot function there is also a function called T s boot which implements time series bootstrapping in context to time series. An example of T s boot is also given in the article the interested reader can read it from the article. So, the bootstrap package also has functions which implement saddle point approximations to the bootstrap. In this session we have learned about the boot package. In our previous sessions we have extensively used R to implement bootstrap we had written our own functions for bootstrap and we have also implemented the R package boot for bootstrap. We have seen a variety of problems that can be addressed through bootstrap starting from building the confidence intervals of mean and median to going into more complex examples of linear models and one way ANOVA and right censored observations. 
in the next couple of sessions we would be shifting a bit away from bootstrap and we would be learning about the basic ideas of two general principles of resampling one is called the permutation test and the other is called the cross validation technique so in the next session we would be talking about the permutation test